Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our worship this Trinity Sunday. We celebrate our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the God who creates, the God who redeems, the God who sanctifies us. In this special celebration, the first Sunday after Pentecost, I'm so glad that you're joining us for our virtual worship this morning and ask God to bless all of us as we continue to journey through uh, these challenging and difficult days, not only of pandemic, but also of the challenges that have come in the aftermath of the racial injustice, the uh, act of a uh, horrifying act of police brutality that all of us witnessed uh, two weeks ago, Memorial Day, uh, in Minneapolis, and the hurt and the healing that is unfolding in these uh, days. Uh, and we know that through the hurt and the healing, uh, sadly, peaceful protest has also been invaded by those intent on violence. And so, sadly, we also see uh, rioting and looting and the chaos uh, that has uh, that has unfolded. And so uh, perhaps now more than ever as a people of faith, we need to come together in prayer to lift one another up, lift up all of those who are brokenhearted, all of those who are discouraged and despondent to the healing, loving care of our triune God, and so welcome. We begin our service this morning with hymn number 362, Holy, Holy, Holy.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship, and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, with the Son and the Holy Spirit. Live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And join me now as we listen to God's word. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth 
and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The, Lord, the earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs, for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. <clears throat> so God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals in the earth of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it God rested from all work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order and listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn is number 368, Holy Father, Great Creator, which can be found on page 7 of your service bulletin. Please join in singing number hymn uh, hymn number 368. My sisters and brothers in Christ, friends one and all, the Lord be with you. And also with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. My sisters and brothers, this is the good news, the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. These days that we find ourselves living in, certainly for me, and I'm guessing for you as well, are de days that, needless to say, we have never seen and we could never have imagined seeing. We have the physically threatening pandemic of the COVID-19 coronavirus. And we have the soul-threatening pandemic that once again has reared its painful and ugly head, the reality of racial injustice in our country. And the aftermath of both of these pandemics puts us in a place of chaos. We are still, for the most part, sheltered at home, although little by little things are beginning on a very limited basis to open back up. But life as we knew it, prior to this pandemic seems very far away. We are indeed adjusting to what undoubtedly will be a new normal. And what that new normal will be, none of us really knows. But we know that what we are living now is something very different from what we were living four months ago. And then, of course, almost two weeks ago, on Memorial Day, we witnessed once again, to our horror and heartbreak, the reality that racial injustice, sadly, is still alive and well in these United States. And it's being lived, we know, sadly, also in the actions and behaviors of some rogue police officers. The actions of those police officers who had custody of George Floyd has angered us, it has sickened us, and perhaps for many of us, it has caused us to despair that that level of human indifference to suffering, to the suffering of another, not only exists, but exists in those who have been commissioned to protect and to serve. And so we find ourselves two weeks later, witnessing peaceful protests, protests that are righteous and understandable, people of every color and creed coming together, people of goodwill not only throughout our country but throughout our world coming together to say we stand up against racism. We stand up against abuse of power. We stand up against indifference to suffering. And we stand for justice. We stand for the right use of power and authority. We stand for that foundation of goodness and righteousness upon which lasting peace can be built. 
in the great happenstance of our liturgical year. We get these readings today. The first one from the very first and second chapter of Genesis. The story of creation. And how appropriate that we hear that story in the midst of the days that we find ourselves in here and now. For the ancient Israelites, God was the one who had the power to bring order out of chaos. That's why Genesis talks about this formless void and the light of our Creator God shines through that darkness of the formless void, through the chaos, to bring order in creation. One of the things that touched me most was a scene that I saw last Sunday and I have seen it played out in other areas around the country since then, but last Sunday was the first time that I saw as people gathered peacefully to protest the racial injustice and abuse of power that we all witnessed in Minnesota. People gathered peacefully to protest in downtown Miami. And there, in the midst of what was seemingly a very tense situation, as law enforcement officers were lined up and present for crowd control, and as waves of people walked through the street, a moment of amazing grace unfolded. A, pol a police officer stepped forward and a protester stepped forward. And in a moment of grace, they simply embraced. It was a profound, symbolic act of reconciliation. As this police officer's fellow officers took a knee out of respect for the moment, out of the respect for the righteousness with which these people had assembled, out of respect for the courageous act of standing up for justice and goodness. It was a powerful scene that I suspect more than any words or speeches helped to bring light to the darkness of our despair. It did for me. And it helped to bring hope in a moment where I personally was very discouraged seeing peaceful protests being invaded by violence, by those more intent on their own selfish agendas, giving way to violent rioting and looting. In the midst of that chaos, God's love broke through. In Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, which we heard proclaimed this morning, Paul gives words of encouragement for the Corinthians to live in peace, for peace is of God. And these days that are so challenging that bring us to our knees, realizing 
how little control we really have and how utterly dependent we are upon our God. These days remind us that if we are to embrace that call of God given through Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, that call of being makers of peace, we first and foremost have to be workers for justice. For no true and lasting peace is built on any other foundation than the foundation of justice. And finally, in that very brief passage from the end of Matthew's Gospel, where Jesus gives the apostles the great commission to baptize all nations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus reminds them and he reminds us that even amidst the chaos, even amidst the pandemics in which we find ourselves, even amidst the brokenheartedness, the anger, the discouragement, that Jesus is with us. I am with you always. Always. Let us call upon that God who is always faithful to his promises to be with us in these days, to give us the courage to be workers for justice and makers of peace, bringing God's divine order to the chaos of sin and death. My sisters and brothers in Christ, friends one and all, together now let us proclaim our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe, believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We, we believe, believe in, in one holy, holy Catholic, Catholic and apostolic church. We, we acknowledge, acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three, found on page nine in your worship bulletin. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacrament. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And especially this morning, we pray for Antonio Cherney, Dennis Figueroa, Carl Lutkins, and Claire Hansen. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. This Sunday, we would normally be celebrating our graduates. And so let us pray in a special way for the class of 2020 from our parish family. And so we pray for Caroline Applewhite, Philip Watton, and Anel Pierre. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Have mercy, mercy upon, upon us. us. Most merciful Father, in your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. My sisters and brothers in Christ, friends one and all, once again it is wonderful to have you joining us this morning for our celebration of Trinity Sunday. I just want to thank um, all of you who were able to participate last Sunday in our parish town hall meeting as we came together virtually through the wonders of Zoom uh, to begin to discuss um, our reopening. Uh, as we know by now, uh, there is a directive from Bishop Eaton, from the leadership of our diocese here in Southeast Florida, uh, that all churches, schools, and special ministries are to remain closed until June the 30th. 
And so we know that we will not be able to gather once again, even on a limited basis, for in-person worship until at least July the 5th. I will tell you that our re-entry planning committee, uh, together with uh, other churches in our deanery here in South Palm Beach County, are projecting, are projecting, opening on Sunday, July the 5th. That is our current hope. And that hope depends, of course, first and foremost, that it will be safe to do so. And so uh, whenever we open, that decision will be driven by data, by the data that points us to a realization that we can open up with appropriate restrictions in place. And so it is our hope that Sunday, July the 5th is the time that we are able to do that. Stay tuned uh, as we continue to uh, look at and consider all of the aspects that will be involved with our reopening. I want to take this opportunity this morning to, to once again thank all of you who have remained faithful to your pledge commitments. Your financial support of St. Paul's continues to resource us for ministry. Uh, even in these days of pandemic, uh, God has not been quarantined, and wonderful ministry continues to unfold. Thank you for your generous support of that ministry. I want to, this morning, also thank Alan Cook, who once again joins us as our guest organist. I want to thank Anita Smith, who joins us as our guest soloist. I want to thank Tim Kilpatrick, who's serving as our uh, MC and our lector for our service this morning. And I want to thank Karen Kilpatrick, our wonderful parish administrator, who is at the back of the church at the audiovisual station, making sure that this broadcast is possible. Well, my sisters and brothers, believe it or not, we are in the first Sunday of June, which means we celebrate and bless all of you who are born in this month of June. So please uh, join me for a special blessing of all of those of you born in the month of June. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which surpasses all understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. We continue our worship this morning with the Eucharistic prayer. This morning we use Eucharistic prayer A, which can be found on page 12 of your service leaflet. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And as you worship in the comfort and safety of your home, I want to encourage you to make a spiritual communion as we celebrate this Trinity Sunday, I encourage you to receive Jesus Christ into your hearts, into your lives, into your families and communities by way of the grace of spiritual communion.
in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayer for our 50th anniversary here in the Diocese of Southeast Florida. Faithful and eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the brightness of your glory, the one foundation and the chief cornerstone of the Church, we give you thanks for the gift of your Church, and especially for this community of faith in our region of Southeast Florida as we celebrate our 50th anniversary. Continue to prosper, we pray, the work of your people, begun, continued, and ended in you, that as we seek to become the beloved community, so may we always show forth your glory in the love we share. Through him who first loved us, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And our special blessing for Trinity Sunday. May God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Uh, before our final hymn and postlude voluntary, I want to invite you once again to join us virtually for coffee hour this morning at 1130. You can log on to uh, our Zoom meeting room. You do not have to have a Zoom account to be able to join us, and I hope you will. It's been uh, a wonderful, uh, although virtual, um, opportunity weekly to get together as a family of faith and a parish community. So that's this morning at 11.30. Sure hope you can join us. Our final hymn is number 366, Holy God, We Praise Thy Name. It can be found on page 18 of your service bulletin. Please join together in singing number 366.
rejoicing in the power of the Spirit, let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord and one another. Thank you.